going off energy. That's what I'm going off, right? That's how I move. Motherfuckers move off looks. Motherfuckers move off what they could do for them. Motherfuckers move off all kind of other materialistic bullshit, right? But if that energy ain't good, ain't shit good. I'm not fucking with you, period. Like, the energy is going to tell me everything I need to know about you. Yeah. Either we moving forward or we just going to cut this shit right now. That's in everything I do. Like, I read energy. Like, before I read a book, well, I say, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, reading people. You bars, nigga. Bars. Before I read a book, I was reading people. Like, I feel like you don't know. You don't know. And that's why. That's the scary part. That's the scary part. And, no. and what comes with that is vulnerability. You don't yeah. know. But you have to, me personally, I start everybody with a clean slate. And you good with me until you ain't. Mm-hmm. Um, until you show me otherwise, you are good company. You are good energy. You mm-hmm. are a good person. But until you start showing me otherwise, you know what I'm saying? Then that's when I be like, oh, I got to I gotta draw back from you. I have no problem with drawing back, realizing that you, you aren't a good company. You aren't a good person. You mm-hmm. don't have, you know, my good intentions or, or mm-hmm. what I got going on mm-hmm. at heart. You know what I'm saying? Undeniable. It's almost like sexual energy. Like, you'll meet somebody and you kind of already know, like, damn, I want to fuck them. Like, I don't know what it is. I have met... Some people That's a my, woman saying that. This is true. Like, look, if I can't. If we go back on record, do, I told niggas yeah. that they know that. As soon as they like. Yeah, bro. As soon as they say, as soon as y'all done exchange 10 words, bro, she'll know you she'll fuck you. Know. She just a combined. Doesn't mean we will, but we know. We probably have sex with you. Ooh, shit, in our head. If you can you identify I mean? that she will, she will. Man, that's some shit we thank you. <laughs> thank you. You feel me? That's some <laughs> shit we sit in there now and like understanding that um it's okay to be deserving. Like, you feel me? You can feel worthy and like you earned the things you worked for. Like, I've struggled uh, a lot feeling like I'm worthy of where I am. I know I work to get here, but like being worthy of, of your position and your success is different. And I used to look at like, uh, I feel like if I do anything conflicting of like my soul or being a good person, then I'm unworthy of everything. It's like strip everything from <laughs> right. me, you feel me? But that's unreal and unnatural as a human. So like now learning to sit in this space and just be like, you feel me? Uh, past is past, but you are where you are because you, you know, you work to be there. You earned that shit. Right. Hey, Nadja. Did too hard, bruh. <laughs> Tapped in with La Russell and Tieta, and we on the Unspoken podcast is not the same. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking romantic or we just talking relationship? Period. I think the worst ones has been the most impactful because mm. it changed me and shaped me the most. I know it's like sound kind of cliche, mm-hmm. but the ones that hurt me the most, I used to think that. Um, so the one relationship that hurt me the most, but I, I thought that I would like that was my husband. Like I'd do anything. Every situation that we went through, I looked at it as if, what would I do if this was my husband? And I thought I would never be able to get, get over that relationship. And when I got over that shit and got over that hump, that let me know that I could get through anything. If I could get through the one thing that I thought would never end, ain't the relationship or anything that I couldn't get over or get past after that. My most impactful relationship has been my son, for me. I can see that. I've never connected with anyone, anything more than my child. Yeah. I can see that. It's brought all kinds of things out of me. And, That's real. And, and Paul's putting all type of things in me. And ever since you had, oh, bro, like you, I can see you as a different man. Like you move different, you do different things, but that's what kids do. That, they make you like. Yeah, he definitely transformed me. Like, and that's something I never thought was gonna ever happen. And I feel like you needed that. I feel like that's why the universe gave you that. Yeah. Cause you know how many times you used to be like, I ain't never have no kids, I ain't yeah. never doing that. I think the universe gave you a kid because you needed that, because you needed that for your mentality. Yeah. For, sure. you to, for you to level up for where you're trying to go in life, period. 
<laughs> now, my relationship with my pops really uh, cultivated me into the man I am. And uh, just having like a male in your life to show up in certain ways, a lot of people don't get that shit. And that shit could really uh, like hinder you. But you know, I also just learned, learned how to navigate life through having my pops and learn how to navigate trouble that might may arise, learning how to communicate, learning how to provide, like those are all things that I was able to benefit from having the structure of a male. I would have to my mom though. Really? I would have to, yeah, because I think uh, as far as my makeup, business oriented makeup, um, learning how to uh, navigate through life, I feel like she was like my biggest teacher. That's dope. Honestly, um, even like, I would, even say, I would say my mom, my dad had a good influence on me too though, but I'd say my mom or anything. Um, as far as like relationships, like, I feel you when it come from like uh, relationships that didn't work out that you learned from. Yeah, how I So I, I do feel like a, a lot of my past relationships that I don't have, people that I don't deal with, has definitely like molded me into like who I want to be for the next relationship. Yeah, I sure. think I think hardship, um, hardship molds me. Um, any hardship that I go through, like I take that shit on the chin, and I'm just like, all right, how can I learn from? It? I'm I'm not a problem person. I'm a solution per person. No. So any problem I go through, I'm like, okay, so yeah, we down bad. How can we fix it? I'm like, how can we fix it? Like immediately. Like what's next? Like mm -hmm. I want to keep talking about the problem, the problem, the problem. I want to know like what's the solution. So anything that I went through that's hard lets me know my strength. Sheesh, heavy, heavy question. <laughs> uh, I didn't have like a traditional upbringing. I grew up in like foster care, and I don't really have like parents per se. I mean, like I have people in the house that like, you know, cook your meals and make sure you have clothes, but like parental guidance, I feel like it's been me to the neck for a minute. Definitely have me thinking different. It even makes me like cautious of who I just have around, like, because the younger me will be a lot more reckless. You know, just whatever, you know, partying, living life. You know, you just have people around, but like when you have a kid, Right now, it's like, it ain't so much about you anymore. Like, even if you don't care about yourself, like, you care about that little person. So, like, the people you have around, it's no nonsense. I heard that phrase, or no nonsense. Like, I'm real no nonsense now. So, like, if I just catch a vibe off of you, nah, you can't be around me. Because that can't rub off on my son. I can't have my son with that type of energy on him, you know what I'm saying? So, it just made me real particular about how I move and what I just have around me. So how do you think that has helped you become the person you are or has it helped you? Uh, I think it's definitely helped. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's definitely helped. I feel like I, um, I don't rely on anybody for anything. And um, I mean, initially, you know, when you look at it from like a victim perspective, you become like very uh, hesitant to ask for help. You know, you feel like people are, aren't gonna show up for you or they're gonna let you down. But when you stop looking at it like somebody did something to you and you realize they did it for you oh, and shit. right, everything that you went through really like helped shape you into the individual that you are today in a great way, then you're able to use your upbringing and everything you've been through in a powerful way instead of using it as like a negative or a reason why you can't do something. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. That's very attractive though, having a female that can, that, that's, that, that care. Like we just talked about like somebody that's, that's willing to, you know, just the small things, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just letting you know that, you know, that you're there, you got their back. Like I feel like that's more impactful and something that a lot of people take for granted. You, I feel would like. Would you say, um, would you say like, I, I don't, ooh. You look like her last I week. don't have a <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a role model. Would you say like your mom is like your role model as a woman? Um, or like do you have a role model? Yeah, I, I know say, that's off topic, but Um, she's one of my role models. I have a lot of like men that I would consider my role models growing up though. Um I mean, it's, it's not a cliche, but like my basketball coach growing yeah. up, like I mean, I was able to meet uh him. Coach White. Yeah, coach White. Yeah. I was able to meet him before um high school like mm -hmm. doing uh in the all boys program longfellow so i was able to build a chemistry with him and understand who he was as a man um before i was even he was even my basketball coach That's him dope. making my basketball coach kind of make it even more dope but um uh, it's crazy that you bring that up too though because it's like even with that like basketball i think that's something that's as uh, uh, as an adult you kind of like take in as far as 
uh, the development of becoming a man. Like yeah. those little small things, you was probably mad. I was probably mad in in, in, in practice or in conflict yeah. that we had growing up. Now as an adult, you kind of look at it like, damn man, you kind of do learn a lot from it. Yeah, your coaches yeah. definitely mold you. Like even like even when you know dancing. Um, those are like my sisters today. The, the most solid friends I have is the, the girls that I danced with in high school. Like them, those are my sisters. They're not even uh, my friends. So, yeah, those those moments uh, definitely shape you and mold you. That's dope. I love that. Like, man, life is so precious, bro. Like, we're desensitized. Like when we look at movies, we see all these killings, and we get on social media and we see two people fighting. World star. Like that shit is not cool. You know, but we so desensitized. Cause we see it every day now. We like imagine if that was your kid that you watching. You know what I'm saying on World Star, getting his shit bashed in. You feel me? Or a police officer kneeling into your kid's throat. We desensitize until it's one of ours. Yeah, until it's one of ours. Until we're affected. So I know now, that. Yo, stuff that you never used to. Man, I don't want to say I was a robot or a machine. Or, you was. But yo, I felt so numb to stuff. But now, like having a son. Remember when that school, that uh, elementary school got shot up? Bro, the old me. You felt different because you got a son. I brushed the shit off, bro. Like, oh man, that's, that's fucked up. Can't yeah. be moving. But like having a kid, having a seed you now, and stuff like that happening, man, that shit give me chills. Like, I can't even imagine getting a call. Hey, man, it was a shooting at your son's school. Oh my God. It was an God. active shooter at your son's school. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. So a lot God. of things just hit different. So like, that's the that's been the most impactful thing for me. I think for males, it's more of an ego thing, though. You know what? But men don't go this through the same thing women go through. As, we, as, I think as, we do. It's in different ways, though. You think so? Because like, y'all could be like, bro, I won't fuck with that shit. And yeah. then y'all be like, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. You be, it be situations where you be having arguments with, with your homeboy, like real arguments. Really? Like, and you be saying, like, sometimes you. you in a moment, you might not feel like you're right, though. The thing about it is, though, it's, it's the acceptance and then coming back afterwards. Like, I can't, I, I can't understand uh, that. I might not understand the man. beginning. And then once, once I realized I was wrong, you was right, I can be able to come and you be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you said was But women right. will be like, you ain't come to my birthday party, bitch. Yeah. Right. And now the friendship is over. Like, you be like, yeah, bro, like, cool bro, shit. We link up next week. You, you know what I'm saying? We, we'll link up next week for y'all. But a bitch, you don't tell me happy birthday on Instagram. We ain't friends no more. That's, yeah. <laughs> y'all not doing that shit. Sure. Um, I think my most impactful relationship was one of my ex-girlfriends. I ain't gonna lie, man. One of my ex-girlfriends just like made me realize a lot of shit about myself because before before this this one, I used to be the, the, the dude the point thing like, why is she acting like this? Why are you right. doing this? Why is she doing that? Until one day I just woke up and said, let me look in the mirror. Mm. I looked in the motherfucking mirror, Got nigga. You checking yourself. Checking yourself. I looked in the mirror, nigga, and I said, you know what? It's things that I'm not doing that's affecting the relationships. Not even just my romantic relationship, but like my business relationships, my relationships with my homies, yeah. my relationships with my mom, my sister, my family, everything, right? So once that relationship happened and I was able to really look at myself in the mirror and realize the shit that I, that I wasn't doing that I need to do as a man, when I realized that and I changed that shit, Every relationship I had started changing. Yeah. Because I started applying that to everything, to my business, to my family, to my friends. That's deep. And now, they look at me different and I look at them different because now I realize that, oh, I'm a fucking grown ass man, bro. Right. I should have been thinking like this. But it always takes that one person sometimes to be like, make, make you realize that shit. I gotta interject, I know this ain't gonna be a part of the episode, but I feel like even with men, it's, okay, so we're saying different calibers. Like you said, You're gonna be in this episode too. Yeah. With females, it is like, um, you know, it's very simple. It's very minute with us, which sometimes it makes us easier to come back with. Yeah. But let me give an example. With niggas, niggas fall the most out about a bitch or some money. Yeah. You fuck with a nigga old lady, you fuck with a nigga that was dealing with a bitch, yeah. it's harder for them to come back with Yeah. Them. So if a female come in the mix of two niggas, it's, it's absolutely that's like the Quavo. That's like the Quavo situation. Absolutely. Yeah. We never knew what the real root was until just now. Them yeah. niggas been stopped fucking with each other. Yeah. Long. Quavo and Sweetie been broke up. Mm -hmm. And now we realize what the real issue mm -hmm. is, and they still not standing on the principle of like, granted, it was lame as fuck, but mm -hmm. men let money and 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 bitches divide them versus us. Ours is a little bit more minute, mm -hmm. which makes it now at the moment. It may be stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it may be longevity. Mm -hmm. But if the bitch come to you and be like, bitch, I want to talk to you. 
And then y'all sitting outside and be like, you know what? That was stupid. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. niggas, they're not. It, yeah. You didn't fuck the you didn't fuck the code. <laughs> it's not really coming back. It's no absolutely not. Yeah. But it's definitely it, niggas back. argue about basketball and 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 and, and bench. <laughs> I like that you said that because a lot of people like they are so quick to be like you. It's your fault. It's mm -hmm. your fault. It's your fault. And they don't never be like, man, what am I doing to contribute? Like, right? What's obviously this this person didn't just explode. You know what I'm saying? It, it took something for that person to explode. What, right? Was I a trigger? What did I do to trigger that? You know what I'm saying? Nobody ever just looks at themselves. Facts. So that's that's beautiful, man. That's that just says growth because so many people don't look at themselves. My mom. Man, I remember growing up, <laughs> my mom would never apologize, ever. Nigga, I'm too. a child, I'm not apologizing. To, you're not, I'm not apologizing to you, you're a child. Because I'm the adult. Because I'm the adult and I can do no wrong. And the way she would apologize was like cooking me a meal or buying me a toy or something, you know, whatever. Or treating me to my favorite yeah. thing. But yeah. like, man, it's so hard for an adult, especially someone who just is so above everybody right to just apologize you know man my mom is she's a perfect human being of course but i'm just saying as an example like it's just so hard for people to really like look at themselves in the mirror and be like man that's the hardest shit i shouldn't have ever. said that that's the hardest shit i shouldn't have ever bro i shouldn't have stepped on his shoe or i shouldn't have nudged on yeah whatever could have been avoided like man be so cool be can say some shit like hey i i it, it really could be, it's really not what you say, it's, it's how, how you say, say it. it. It's how you really, say it. It's really how you sure. say it. Like, you come to me sure. and say some, you know, some, some wild shit in, in one way, but you come to me another way and say, hey, what you did was fucked up. I but ain't the ultimate, with that. you're not coming, you're probably not going to. The only Men, two, I'm know, talking, the only, what you explained was the ones that we not coming back from. Exactly. But I'm talking about things that but, we can come back from, though. But, that's keeping friendships. Because at the end of the day, let, let's just keep a hypothetical. Like, say it's a bitch that you fuck with in college. Your friend that you've met now after college and they may have, they know that y'all know each other, but may have not known the extent of or how you and this female yeah. may have fucked around. Yeah. So you can yeah. like, hey man, what's going on with so-and-so? May not know really like all the dynamics, but know that you know the girl. Right. But you know in in, in, in like in, in essence you fuck with the bitch. Mm -hmm. You may kind of feel a way about it, but you not gonna sound super pressed because this is a bitch. I had a situation well, super bad. How do you identify with it's a feeling. Okay, energy is one of those things that is like undeniable. It's almost like sexual energy. Like you'll meet somebody you kind of already know, like damn, I want to fuck them. Like I don't know what it is. I have met some people. That's a woman my... saying it. This is true. Yeah. Like, look, if I we can, go back I on record. Feel... I told niggas yeah. that they know that. As soon as they like, yeah, bro. As soon as they say, as soon as y'all exchange ten words, bro, she'll know. You she'll fuck you. Know. She just Doesn't mean we will. But we know we probably have sex with you. Oh shit! In our head. If you can you know identify I mean? that she will, she will. But anyway, can you get energy? Up there? Get, get energy up. can't can't be denied. But I have met some divine human beings where like I felt their energy when they came through the door. Like you could just feel like, damn, you like your energy is good. Almost like I never met Janae Echo, but I feel like if you met her, you would just feel like, like. It's the presence about you. That's how motherfuckers feel yeah. about me. Really? Yeah, really Come on, my Libra. You know Let me tell you something. Libras, y'all, them motherfuckers, <laughs> and they are full of themselves. Libras are Leos in disguise. They be trying to be all humble, like, I don't really know. Like, people just gravitate you know, to me. That, like, that's just how we're supposed to be. Because he said the, the humble and meek shall inherit the earth. You know what I'm saying? But, like, every now and then you got to let them know. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even like crazy. It is. It's like music. Yeah, it's a feeling. It's like music, bro. When you hear a song, you know that shit fire. You ain't. Fuck what he talking about. When Fuck you, what she talking about. When you know, you know. How does it feel? When you play a song, nigga, that shit feel good. That feel good. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you getting dressed, that shit feel good. That's yeah. called energy. Yeah. Fuck. They could be saying, I'm gonna kill your mama, kill no. your daddy, but if the beat good. You gotta go trust your instinct. That's what it is. Like when they talk about uh, uh, when they say women, intuition and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Men have it too. Like you gotta trust your gut. You gotta trust your instinct. And your shit, it's not gonna lie to you. If your gut is telling you like, yo, you can call it God, the universe, energy, whatever. Your gut is gonna tell you, like. I D call it red flag. <laughs> Bro. It's really about just understanding the company that you keep, though. Yeah. Like, understanding that, you know, the people that's around you are around you for a reason. Yeah. Knowing, knowing and understanding that they wanna be around you for one. And if they're gonna be around you, is it genuine? Can y'all yeah. can, can, can learn off each other? Can y'all yeah. build off each other? Yeah. Um, 
man. Um, I feel like for me, it's like it's, it's, it's just pretty much like even with I, I always bring unspoken to it, but it, it's it's more than just me. Like I build a platform for everybody else to get that shit off. You know what I'm saying? And we love and, that. And, and I appreciate that. <laughs> but it's like also having people around me. Like if if we the fifth one with me, I, I might not be as motivated. Or yeah. if Ashley was with me, I wouldn't be as motivated. Yeah. But it's like those little subtle conversations that we have that kind of let me know like, hey, keep that shit going. Because yeah. a lot of times when you in your business and, and or or, or entrepreneurship role, you, it, it's a lot of dark moments and then when you really don't know what's going on or, or how to fix it or how to navigate, but it's also going to be people around you that's going to make you, you know, yeah. it's going to settle For you sure. down, make you be like, hey, you okay, bro, don't, 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 yeah, let, that's don't, yeah. don't let it, you know, affect you as much. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's more important than, than anything. Yeah. But yeah, if you, it's just, I feel like there's, I feel like for me, I feel like I'm an energy reader. I feel like I just know, like I know right away. I could just tell, like you could just tell they're at peace. Good energy is peaceful energy. Good energy is non-combative energy. It's energy that is just is open. Like you come in a room, you're open. Yeah. You don't get offended by stuff. People can come at you, and you just have this this peaceful response to everything. You could just tell that somebody is just in tune with themselves. Yeah. And it's like all this extra shit. Like I don't even care about that. I'm just here to spread love and good energy. You could just tell. It's like, yeah. the young kids call the good vibes. The thing about intuition is everybody and everything has it. Even animals, right? Yeah. You you see a dog, you come up to a dog, if a dog come up to you, I don't happy and shit. Tail wagging. Energy, that's energy, right? But if a dog come up to you like, yeah, hold up, what the fuck? Yeah. Nigga, your energy off, nigga. Trust the animals. Trust, yeah. I'm telling you, that shit don't uh, lie, yo, nigga. Yo, yeah. You intuition don't lie. Trust yourself. That's what people have a problem with, trusting they self, trusting their gut. That's real. You ain't never felt like, man, I knew I should have never went to this motherfucking club. Or, people say that shit every I day. I knew I shouldn't have parked right there. Or, yep. Man, something was telling me not to fuck with this bitch. Yep. Something was telling me not to kick it with these niggas, bro. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I knew I shouldn't have sat down at that fucking interview and did that show unspoken. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it, it might it be anything, bro. Like, you got to trust your gut, trust your instinct nah, every real shit. time, bro. Because... You just gonna be mad at yourself. You ain't got nobody to blame but yourself. And that's that's how I know. That, I mean, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's how I know. Damn, you know what? Now I'm gonna take it back. It's two things that don't lie. Energy and instincts. Oh yeah, sure. Men lie, women lie, but energy, instincts don't motherfucking lie. Trust that shit on God. God did! God did. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have hit that rock. I knew I should have pulled out. Surround yourself around people that's gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna keep you keep you going one and also help you build you know yeah. what i'm saying like if you can't help me or put me in a position where that's gonna you know pick me at a higher platform or you know it's not even about let's say having like um what's the word to use like having like a certain status it's more about like i said earlier action like yeah we talked about it earlier like you might not be able to know how to edit but you can you can you can yeah. ask questions that's you, 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 it's a lot of ways you can support and learn, sure. how, and learn how to, you know, help whatever I got going on. Right, you know just be saying? supportive. Yeah. Being supportive goes a long way. Yeah, and that also that, that also helps with your, you know, yeah. your, your team. Asking how, questions. How you build things. Yeah, you're trying for sure. to build, you know, for sure. people around you. Making sure that everybody's on the same page. Like, yeah, for sure. That also helps. That, listen, that's, listen, motherfuckers be talking about how they fuck with people, right, but... When I'm fucking with somebody, I'm going off energy. That's what I'm going off, right? That's how I move. Motherfuckers move off looks. Motherfuckers move off what they can do for them. Motherfuckers move off all kind of other materialistic bullshit, right? But if that energy ain't good, ain't shit good. I'm not fucking with you, period. Like, the energy is going to tell me everything I need to know about you. Yeah. Either we moving forward or we just going to cut this shit right now. That's in everything I do. Like, I read energy. Like, before I read a book, I say, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, reading people bars reading. nigga bars before I read a book I was reading people like if I'm in a room and it's a vibe I'm staying I'm kicking it but if I'm in a room and I feel some kind of dark hey something ain't right I'm out and that has saved my life so many times though but like, you know what a great philosopher once said men lie women lie but nigga energy don't lie energy does not lie I'm that philosopher bro. I said that bro <laughs> That's a fact, bro. <laughs> energy does not lie. Yeah. I feel like I feel like you don't know. You don't know, and that's why. That's the scary part. That's the scary part, and no. and what comes with that is vulnerability. You don't yeah. know, but you have to. Me personally, I start everybody with a clean slate, and you good with me until you ain't. Mm -hmm. Um, until you show me otherwise, you are 
good company. You are good energy. You are a good person. But until you start showing me otherwise, you know what I'm saying? Then that's when I be like, oh, I got to I gotta draw back from you. I have no problem with drawing back, realizing that you, you aren't a good company. You aren't a good person. You don't have, you know, my good intentions or, or what I got going on at heart. You know what I'm saying? You don't know when people come into your lives because people could put on a facade and have you thinking one thing and they really like against you you know what i'm saying a lot of people go through that i think men to me men go through that a lot um a lot too you know they'll ride your coattail till they can't um so for me i start i start everybody with a clean slate because you you don't know what a person good we, we do know good vibes you know what i'm saying that person got a good vibe that's that's all cool and dandy but until you start really getting in depth with a person right. and you start seeing what they stand for and what they fall for and you start hearing them how they talk in certain situations like you listen to situations that they got going on you're like mm, if you're talking about this person this way then i know i don't need to be fooling with you so to me i you don't know yeah. but i'm gonna give you a clean slate until otherwise you ran out to play nine man my chick mad too i got oh you got three kids too you know what i'm saying you just feel when it click like you so be you feel there. like good energy is people that have not, a similar not even, energy as yours it ain't even like, just similar because you know what i'm saying it ain't even similar because you could also run into a nigga and i'd have had this happen in like his situation is totally different from yours you know what i'm saying he out there with three kids and a wife but he out there scrambling because he trying to figure out how he gonna hide the fact that he fucking the nanny and he make a million dollars a year and shit. Like it's Peter, different situations. What the hell? How can you tell they got good energy though? That's what I'm saying. That's not good energy. I'm just letting oh. you know, like. But I'm saying so when you do find good energy, it's like through like. You know, like, like everybody knows. Like you know when you're dealing with good energy. Like I can't explain it, but it's like it always clicks. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's like it's just supposed to happen. You'll get the fucking, fuck, you get the fucking around and kicking it, and somehow, you know what I'm saying? It just reveals itself. A bitch can be so fucking bad, bro. Okay. But her energy off. I don't give a fuck how pretty you is, how, how fat your ass is. I don't give a fuck what you driving, what you. I don't give a fuck what you wearing. If your energy off, bitch, you off. Run. Clipped. Run. Done. Finito. Run. Bro, I, you honestly, I ain't get hard if your energy whack. Oh, no. Nah. Your listen, energy whack, I ain't hard. Listen, good energy make the best sex. Man, what? I don't that know if y'all know this. Electricity, bro, that shit feel crazy. I don't know if y'all know this. I feel like you're on ecstasy. That's the good energy. That's good ass energy. I don't, I ain't gonna lie, I don't fuck some chicks, and it was just like a fuck, and it was just a fuck, right? But I don't fuck the girl that I had energy with first, and it was amazing. Because, fellas, let me tell y'all something. If y'all don't know this, Foreplay starts before the bedroom, my oh, nigga. Sure. That shit start before the bedroom. Sure. So when y'all kicking and hanging out, doing whatever y'all doing, get that energy right. That's where the foreplay starts. Her pussy's wet when y'all at that table and you talking Man, that shit what? that she want to hear. If you ain't uh, talking that shit she want to hear, the pussy ain't wet, my nigga. That's what the foreplay starts at. All you got to so. do is look at her. You know what I'm saying? A certain way, I'm telling she you. she look at me a certain way. Are you smell a certain way? Fellas, get, get some cologne, fellas. Get some cologne. Don't <laughs> fuck around with the fuck around. I'm telling you. Discernment for me. I, I, God granted me with a gift of discernment. Big word and, and when it comes to my discernment, God gonna tell me who's for me and who ain't. And that comes with wisdom and age. And the older you get, the more wisdom you gain and the more discernment you know. Yeah, everybody everybody ain't, but I do. That, also come from <laughs> make, that come from also making a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. Learning. Understanding that it was a mistake. You, know you see the signs. You've been through so much shit. You give yourself for that. Mistake. Grace. 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 Keyword. Also, 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 um, and this might be going off topic, but also, like, um, understanding, like, give me yourself, like, a, not a pass, but, like, because I feel like a lot of times we give ourselves a hard time. And that's with grace. And I feel like. You got to give that, yourself yeah. grace. I did, one day I had this situation where I had a homegirl. I did some shit out of character. I was so out of character. Yeah. And I was crying. I was like, that ain't me. I would never do it. She just looked at me. She said, girl. She said, Todd, give yourself grace. Shit happens. And sometimes we do shit that we would never expect ourselves to do. And that, that's when I really locked in with that friendship because it was like, not she didn't judge me and say, this bitch tripping. Yeah. But she was like, give yourself grace. We do shit, everybody do some shit out of character so that we ain't, we would never thought we do. That's why I don't never, I, when I, I truly believe in the, the quote, never say never. never. You don't know what you'll do to you in that situation. So. Right.
Uh, the energy is, is crap, bro. The energy is important more than anything else. The energy. And brushing your teeth. Also, don't wear color contact. That's my uh, red flag. <laughs> color contact. Wait, wait, wait. If you got color contacts in your eyes, your energy is automatically boo boo. <laughs> your shit is off. It don't even look my way. Don't even deal me. I'm not responding. Blocked. Color contacts. Blocked. <laughs> in the trash. <laughs> I think it's hyper important. I think uh, the trajectory of your career and your life is based on the relationships that you have with people. You feel me? Uh, the relationships you have in life could, could take you to the top of the mountain or keep you at the bottom of it. Actual. If you hang around four broke niggas, you're going to be the face. <laughs> being, I, I think it's being yourself, though. And, and also being honest. I feel like it, it, that, that comes with a uh, respect factor. Yeah. I feel like if you have that respect factor, then um, building relationships is going to be, you're going you're gonna to think, I think that knowing the importance of it, honestly, knowing that it's important is just important. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like understanding like, hey, this is what I gotta do to climb this ladder or you know what I'm saying? Like even with unspoken, like trying to network and trying to meet new people and trying to uh, bring people onto the show, special guests, like stuff like that. Like, I feel like that's like knowing the importance of that, knowing yeah. what it takes to build a platform or, you know, build a brand, um, and knowing what comes with that. You know, a lot of the things that you know, we get in life, come off relationships, people yeah. that we know. I think it's vital for the relationships to be defined as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, just people knowing why they're in your life and how they can relate, knowing their boundaries. You know what I'm saying? I think it's very important for good relationships to be established on all levels, whether that's romantically, as friends, even in like your regular life with your siblings, your parents. But yeah, I do think it's vital. It's especially vital to your peace. Cause you know, if you ain't managed your relationship right, ain't no way like, ain't no way you got balance in your life. Anyway, when you talk about a relationship, any kind of relationship, whether it's with a friend, a family member, girlfriend, boyfriend, and just being genuine through and through. Like, this is my brother. And we ain't, there ain't no blood like could make us any closer. But it's because, you 100, you feel me? Like, it's being genuine. I don't feel like there's an ulterior motive. And if there is a motive, you're gonna be like, hey, bro, you my bro. I need to borrow you to do this. Like, come through and do this. Like, straight up, it ain't no, I mean, what you always tell me when I wanna ask, nigga, get to it, nigga, why didn't you just ask me that shit? Straight up. Ain't, it's just genuine, bro. It's just always genuine. And I feel like in any relationship, if this shit don't feel genuine, it don't feel real, it's never gonna be a good relationship, ever. But, I mean, we talk about communication. Yeah, that's key or whatever. But being genuine, for me, that's number one. Overcoming differences in adversity. Mm -hmm. I think we don't talk about it that enough is having that. We're going to have some differences, and we try to avoid those differences a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have friends that you've been with for so long, mm -hmm. and, you know, you do everything with them. And then it's that moment where y'all clash. Mm -hmm. That, like... That first moment where y'all clash is like, like how do I talk about yeah, this situation yeah. and still be friends and not offend them? Mm -hmm. And be able to overcome that adversity is, mm -hmm. to me, some of the hardest, because you could, you afraid that you could lose a friend by just being honest about how you feel. Like, hey, mm -hmm. that shit that you pulled, like, honestly, it didn't make me feel comfortable. But you, you know, some people not able to take constructive criticism or the criticism like to be to for me to be open and vulnerable and be like hey you hurt me mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and be able to be able to say you hurt me but we can still be friends and how can i correct it mm -hmm. i feel like being able to treat our friendships like we treat our our platonic is that the word i'm calling platonic relationships with our mm -hmm. the males that we date mm -hmm. it should be very similar mm -hmm. and sometimes we put more and and fixing shit with the men and women that we date versus our friendship we when really it's it really all ties in together i think that to me that's important is be able to have those hard conversations mm -hmm. with our friendships or even family having those be able to have those hard conversations and still be able to maintain a friendship and understanding that to where it doesn't tear the friendship apart well for some people it'd be hard to know when someone when someone's genuine it's oh, like, yeah. it take a little time but then you, you finally figure that shit out but my thing is um of course genuine of course energy Another thing is loyalty, like, mm. 
loyalty. Yeah. Like, I'd rather you be loyal than love me any day. Like, I want that loyalty. I want to know that we can do business or we can be in a relationship. We can do that. And you and you understand me to the point that you're not going to go do no fuck shit that you know I don't fuck with. Right. Like, fuck with me. Don't fuck without me. Right. Type shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck with me. Don't fuck without me. You know what I'm saying? But nah, loyalty, bro. Like, I need to know that if we doing business, you ain't finna go behind my back and do the other shit that I don't approve of without even like going back to that word, communicating right. with me too. Right, right. That's true. True? That's true. Facts. I've been loyal to a fault, like, we all are. Like, if you don't have good relationships, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you think you're gonna go. It's not about, like, what you know, a lot of times it's about who you know. And it's gonna put you in doors and spaces that you probably wouldn't be otherwise. I don't know if people like think about that enough, um, especially when it pertains to like burning bridges. Like, be careful who you burn a bridge with because, yeah, a lot of people are very quick to be like, I don't need you. I, like, somebody you may not need in 2020 and 2030, like, that may be that person for you. So, I feel like I take that very, very seriously. I try my best to end all my relationships on a good note because you just never know when you're going to need somebody. So, yeah, it's important. The relationships you cultivate definitely determine where you go in life. If you're building like positive relationships with people and you're doing good business and you're treating people well, then your life usually go well. You're treating people poorly, you're doing poor business, poor life. <laughs> <laughs> poor life. <laughs> poor life. <laughs> Simple. I try my best to, you know, end on a very good note. Now, it may not always be that way and it's so fuck em, but I do try my best. <laughs> Like, I definitely am, I'm one of those people that I, I'll double back on somebody. Like, I might give you, like, a year to cool off, but I'm going to come back and be like, you good? Like, you want to talk about it? Like, I believe in, like, my closure, my closure moment with people. Just so you know, like, I really didn't do nothing that bad, and if I did, I can apologize. But, like, do you really have a right not like that? I'd rather just act like you don't exist than to have, like, bad love with somebody. That's real. Yeah. Yeah, like, I didn't mean so like, long. Man. One hundred, like hell I yeah! Been, I've been so loyal to like nigga. Shit, I'm finna go to jail too, type shit. Like hell yeah! What the fuck am I going to jail for? I ain't do nothing. Bro, bro I'm being so, so loyal on some real shit. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I've been so loyal to so many motherfuckers that I think I've been holding myself back. Yeah, I feel like right now I could have been a millionaire if I wasn't so loyal. To right. be real with you, right? I've been loyal. I've been so loyal to niggas that I was holding myself back because I'm like, you know what? Let me not go do this because. I'm loyal to this situation, right, right, right. right? Not even that the next situation was some fuck shit or some dirty shit, but it's just like, I'm loyal to this. I told, I gave him my word. I'm a solid ass nigga, so let me stick with this for a minute. Yeah. And get what, that that, let, that let me stick to this for a minute turned into let me stick to this for years. Right, you know your partner gonna feel a way if you take it, you take this opportunity. Absolutely. feel like you being disloyal. Absolutely. But saying that to say this, if you're dealing with some real niggas, right? Oh, A yeah. real nigga gonna be like, Go do that. Yeah, do that. What you mean? Cause if you if you if you level up, you gonna help this situation. Why the fuck would I want to hold you back? We ain't no crabs in the barrel, nigga. We ain't doing that bullshit. But the, but the people that I've been loyal to my whole life, I feel like I was holding myself back. Right. They won't hold me back. I was holding myself back because I'm just such a solid ass, real ass nigga. I was loyal so loyal. To a fault. Loyal to a motherfucking fault. We have another episode that we talk about the thin line between loyalty and stupidity. So. Okay. Pretty much Uh, man, I feel like it's a, it's a, I feel like it's a thick ass line between the two. Like <laughs> loyalty uh, feels good. It feels nourishing. It feels nurturing. You always feel good about, about it. Uh, stupidity, you never feel good about it. Like when you, when you loyal to the point where it's like you're stupid, you always feel nasty or you're doing shit that you're not used to doing that you know you don't do. You feel me? It doesn't feel the same as, as loyalty. Loyalty is pure. Even with relationships, right? I'll with women, right? I've stayed in relationships with women way longer than I should have. I should have been gone, right? But me just being loyal, like, you know what? Maybe she can maybe she can change. I'ma stay down. I'ma stay down. Because I don't want to be the nigga to be like, I just left because she did some fuck shit. But women too, a lot of women are the same way. A nigga be dogging and treating them like dirt. And they just be like, oh no, nah, I'ma be loyal. But you don't even know what this nigga got going on. But you just so loyal. So it's just like, damn, what the what the hell do we do? Like you know, like, because at the end of the day, relationships are work, right? It's work. It ain't going to be easy all the time. 
So there's that. And, and that's what we fucking us up though, cause we always like, I know it ain't gonna be easy. I know we gotta work for it. Yeah. But then it's the it's the other side of us thinking like, okay, so how long do I work for this shit before I know I need to get the fuck up out of here? I struggle with that. I can tell I struggle with that. But see, and that's where I've grown at. Like I said, yeah. like some of my past relationships, out of all the past relationships I have, I learned something from each one. And now I'm at a point where like I know when it's like, you know what? This ain't for me, it's time to go. Right. At what point do you start doing for you? Like, exactly. You know. When you say stupidity between loyalty, loyalty and stupidity, do you mean like blind loyalty? Like you being loyal to somebody and they just yeah. dogging you out? No, no dogging you out, no one to leave, no one to let yeah. go. I think like you never feel guilty or dumb for being loyal. And you never should, honestly. Even if the person on the other end isn't treating you well, like that's on them. That's a them thing, not a you right. thing. Like you should always stick to your moral code and your moral compass regardless of how other people treat you or else. Now you just like the person who you didn't like how they treated you, you know? Like, there's no, I don't, I don't believe in blind loyalty or that there's a thin line between loyalty and stupidity. Like, you should always stick to your moral compass regardless of what other people do. And, you know, that's gonna come back on them, like we said. Like, when you build bad relationships, you get bad outcomes. I'm gonna always be a good person and be loyal and do what I think is right, because I know my blessings is coming, regardless of if it comes with them or with the next person down the road. Because I'm such a real, I'm just raised that way, bro. Like, I was raised by like street OG niggas, right? So they taught me a certain level of loyalty. So that's how I thought about everything when it came to relationships with women, relationships with business, everything, right? I took that street mentality and used it with that. Yeah. When I, when really I got to separate that shit. Cause when it comes to women, like that shit different. When it comes to my friends, it's different. Right. When I'm dealing with street shit, it's a whole nother thing, right? But I kept all that shit in one pot. And that's why I fucked up that so. But now I know. I learned as I got growth. older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keyword growth, people. Growth. We need that. We need that. But through growth, I learned, and now a bitch can't fuck over me again. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what, I'm saying? what you got for me, D? <laughs> Do you have expectations of the company you keep? No. I don't have expectations on anybody. Expectations lead to disappointment. Mm. I think naturally you have expectations for people around you, but you shouldn't. Uh, you know, I feel like expectations always uh, lead to disappointment no matter what. So I don't think you should, but I think as humans, we naturally do. We expect people to be certain people, but yeah, you definitely shouldn't. It's not a, uh, it doesn't help the relationship having an expectation <laughs> of someone ever. Right. I'll say this. I've learned through experience to not have expectations, right? Yeah. When I meet new people or people come in my life, what they show me is what it is, right? I don't expect nothing. I don't, I don't want to meet D and be like, oh, I expect this nigga to be a cool ass nigga. He's going to be loyal. He's going to be real. And then you do some fuck shit. Now my feelings hurt. Now I'm fucking like, damn, bro, I thought this nigga would. Nah, fuck that. Expectations lead to motherfucking heartbreak. That's so, true. Ain't none of that. I think like, yeah, 100%, like you definitely gotta know like your space in my life and why you're there. And no matter what, like, I feel like no matter what capacity you are in my life, like I expect you to hold me accountable. I expect to be able to hold you accountable. I expect you to help me grow in whatever area it is that you, you're placed in. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want anything stagnant in my life. I don't like half-ass nothing. I'm super big on that shit. Like, like I'm navigating through my 20s. Like I'm coming on my last year of my 20s. And like friendships have been a big thing for me. I have let go of a lot of people that I thought I would have in my life forever, simply because like you half ass doing this shit. Like mm -hmm. it's it's hard being an adult, it's hard juggling stuff, but at the same time, like if I call you my friend, I expect you to be a friend. I don't I don't let that shit go like, oh well, no, make time, make space. Like it's not impossible. I'm not saying you gotta talk to me every fucking day, but like be be somebody that's worth calling a friend, bro. Like and I, that's just with anything in my partnerships. But, um, romantically, like I have expectations that have to be met. With my family, like I have expectations that That's have real. to be met. So, yeah, I stand real firm on that, and um, yeah, and I have my boundaries with them too. Boundaries with them. You put me on game, honestly, because <laughs> I be, I, I, I kind of like, I, I feel you. Um, and, and speak your truth, honestly, like speak your truth, because you know we. You, we, a lot of times we don't know. We learn and we learn at us, we learn at people at the same time. That's true. I am a little different. So I come from, I have a wild past. I got a different story, right? I do have expectations from the company I keep. 
What? By even like new people? Or nah. just fuck no. No. So, so you got this place for me, right? Because right. you know me. Because this is my brother. So this is my thing. So that's what I was gonna get to. Like the company I keep, I keep an all kind of company. But it's certain people that I do certain things around and, and have around during certain times. So like you ever see me, right? And niggas be smoking, and I be like, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But then you see me and then I'm smoking. And then you smoking, right? It's different because company. Different company. So if I could smoke around you, put it that way. If I could smoke around you, get fucked up around you, get blackout drunk around you, you probably my family. Like I consider you family. So that type of company that I keep, my only expectations from you is to watch my back and have my best interest at heart. That is it. Whatever it is, you feel me? Like we out at a party, I want Ro to get home safe. You know what I'm saying? If we're having a conversation, educate me. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that I mess with, I, I admire something about them. Like, there's something about them I admire. So, my expectations from the company I keep is to grow. Just continue to grow. Or continue to feel safe. Or just watch my back. Like, that is it. You know what I'm saying? The woman that I fucking rest, rest my head with, lay my head with. Um, fucking my brother that I'm getting money with, eating with, working out with. You know what I'm saying? Make me better. Just we all making each other better. And that's my expectation of myself for you. Like, when we get together, make my niggas better. Make my girl better. Make my son better. Anybody I'm with, just grow. Grow when you with me. You know what I'm saying? And I want to grow when I'm with you. Otherwise, I don't really want to be around you, to be honest. And the company that I keep better know their goddamn expectations. You going to know, like, who this inside joke pertains to, who you talk to about this, who you talk to about that. How close my relationship is with this person over this person. What you talk to this person about, that person about. And on top of them niggas knowing that, I expect them to know that when they're all in the same room as well. Whether it's male or female. Like, everybody should know their place accordingly and know how to act. But, like, I'm very transparent in how I fuck with people. How I deal with relationships. Like, that's never an issue. Like, ain't never really no, you know. Oh, I didn't know you was doing that. And niggas mad. It's like, nah, nigga, I kind of get why I didn't know you was doing that right because I don't talk to you like that. <laughs> kind of shit, you know what I mean? Nah, that makes sense. I agree with you. As soon as they act outside of the expectation that you set, now you're upset with them. And they just being themselves. Like, that's just who they are. But I think, yeah, definitely naturally, like, when you treat people really well and you always do right by them, you expect in return for them to treat you the same way or also do right by you. But nobody's you. Right, nobody's you. <laughs> so you can't treat that shit you. <laughs> right. I just feel like, I done, been, I done been disappointed so much in my life right now. Even with people that I've been around for years, some shit happened and I'd be like, wow. I don't I don't want to feel it no more. So it's like, you don't want to have no expectation. Exactly. So I don't have no expectation, right? Even though I know like certain niggas, like, I know you're a solid ass real nigga, right? I have expect I have a little expectation. Like I know, I know certain things, right? But it's like, I'm not going to be like, I expect you to do this. Because if you don't do that, I'm going to be like, wow. And now my feelings hurt. And yes, yes, guys. Other guys can hurt guys' feelings, yes. So sometimes my feelings will be hurt if you don't do some shit I expect you to do. So I don't do that. But I do know that you're a solid ass, real right. ass nigga. And so I, that's it. You expect me to be a solid, real nigga. I, I don't say that. You think it. You're self accountable to those same standards. I know that's the area that I struggle in. I got people who make those efforts to make sure they reach out to me every now and then. But like, you got to be more diligent and checking in on people too because i know like a lot of shit happened in life you know relationships people got kids but you can't forget the people that held you down because like shit might be cool for right now but you don't want to be looking around and some shit hit the fan and you like oh i need to hit up this motherfucking jimmy but damn i ain't spoke to that nigga in like three months but it ain't no bad blood just miss you know what i'm saying you gotta be conscious of like fucking with the people that fuck with you you gotta yeah. make sure you make an effort to do yeah. that shit because if not and they start feeling invaluable that's how you fuck around and you lose your circle you ain't got that's nobody to depend on now i feel like now dude i mm -hmm. feel like I, let me keep on hunting with you as, as, a, as growing up as, as, a, as a young adult i did it because at that point i'm really taking you for who, who you are right. you know what i'm saying like friendship people i've met you know through high school college like, I'm taking you for who you are. As an adult, I do think, I, I, I do, because it's like, it's different. Like, I can't really, I don't have them to really stand on. Yeah. Especially when it's like new relationships that I'm building, with people that I'm like, trying to um, 
network with, mm-hmm. I, it's, it's different. Like I kind of, it's kind of like I feel like with that question, it's more so with friends. No, but with new people that I'm building relationships with, yes. I, I, I what I decide, what I noticed though, I've, I've drawn this thin line between. This is like a, I guess a known word, but it's not even expectations, but. Our boundaries, mm-hmm. but you got expectations. This is what I expect of you. Boundaries is, is is this is what you this is what I'm not willing to put up with. Mm-hmm. And when you have expectations, I, like I said, I feel like that leads to disappointment. When you have boundaries, when you start disrupting my boundaries, I could push you away versus you hurting me and then me having that expectation. Well, I see what you're saying. You yeah, see what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Like that, yo, I'm telling you, like that, I'm so glad that you said that and it's coming from like the opposite sex because I don't know if that's like why male friendships, I feel like thrive more than like female friendships. Like I don't really see a lot of male follow-ups. I see female follow-ups all the time. And it's like, bro, you get caught up in your relationships. You get caught up in like, you just lose yourself in yeah. whatever you're doing. And I think women tend to do that in motherhood and being a wife or in being whatever it is that they're doing, whatever role that they're playing, you get so caught up in that and you forget like, yo, like I was here before that. And you know, you have to water everything. You may not be able to water everything equally, but you can still, Make time for shit that's important. Like, With women know it'd be tough, right? This, this is just something that I noticed. Like, I don't want to speak for women, but like, I've just seen instances of this where, like, with women, it'll be tough because they'll fuck around and they'll reach different stages of life yeah. at different stages than their friend. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. on top of all of that, y'all are more emotional creatures. And based on what somebody's going through in life, they may be more emotional. Like yeah. the friend that got married right out of college, they got pregnant, and the rest of y'all got pregnant later. Yeah. You didn't realize not only was she going through a different situation because she was pregnant and, and dealing with the man, but also like her hormones and shit yeah, was changing. So that's, that's some shit true. you can't relate to. That's but then true. like it might be a fallout then, then like four and five years later when you get married and you have kids and you go through that shit, you be like, oh damn, I. I ain't know this but, my homegirl was going through. But, I, that's but just, let me just say this, because I heard that there has been a conversation that I heard like on TikTok where it was like a single friend and it was like, you know, your married friends leave you out. Like y'all just assume that we wouldn't relate like, or y'all assume that, you know, we won't get it. And it's like, you don't even give us an opportunity to like be around. Like, oh, I'm just gonna hang out with like my married friends now, my mom's friends or my friends who have kids. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to separate the two. Like we very much can be the turn up friend, but if we can also babysit the kids, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to, separate your life even though we're in different spaces and I think that happens I don't know subconsciously on purpose or what but it's weird but you got your friend your um, boyfriend could be like yeah she's single you shouldn't be hanging out with her she gonna make you be a hoe and it's like that's this, not even true this <laughs> are you a spiritual person and how has spirituality transformed your perspective on life uh for me completely in every way you know I used to be able to uh live and navigate life a certain way uh, unbothered, like without feeling any type of guilt or shame for it, you feel me? But once you get to a certain level spiritually and just consciously, everything beat your ass. Like, you feel me? If you act out of cold in any way, you know, you're going to have to sit with it. You're going to go through that depression. You're going to feel that guilt and that shame. But that only comes after you unlock a certain level of consciousness. I How's it impact your life, there? though? Um... I'm big on faith, and faith is not easy to have because what comes with faith, you can't have any doubts. You can't have doubt and question and still have faith. You have to truly trust. You have to truly believe. I disagree with that. You I think feel so? Like, I feel like you can have faith and still have doubts. I feel you like the, the human part of you is the you doubt, can. but the faith is what's going to keep you going, though. Faith does keep, but see, then, mm, that's a different subject. Um, no, this, he, that's a subject. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a subject. No, that's a subject. <laughs> When I became aware, I became spiritual because there was a point where you just kind of doing what you was told or what you was taught versus thinking for yourself. Once I've been able to think for myself, that's mm-hmm. when I became more spiritual. Yeah, and boy. Going based off. Feeling. Yeah, talk your shit. Yeah, going based off feeling versus words and quote unquote logic because what, you, what, you, what you've been told is logic. It's not always logic. So, toast to that. I mean, that's just. Toast to that. Toast to that. 
in my early 20s, I think that's when I like found like spirituality and I feel like it's really grounded me and it's really allowed me to have an understanding like of life and how it works and my place in life and the power that I have just as a person, as a human. Um, being spiritual is just something that is like deeply rooted within you. Like, you know, when you meditate and stuff like that. I remember one time I meditated and I was like, I ain't even gonna go into detail, but it was like very freeing and it was very like surreal and it felt so, I don't know, it just felt, it felt crazy that I was so in tune myself that I was able to communicate with my higher self. And I just feel like there's just so much power and so much peace in knowing that like the world was made for you and like everything that you want is already inside of you. All the answers that you seek are the things that you already know. And it's a beautiful like feeling and it's just, I don't know, it's amazing. I don't think I was really like conscious of like spirituality in that sense initially, but I feel like I've always felt like energy in a sense. I just didn't know how to like put it into words, but I feel like I've my family used to call me hella sensitive because I used to cry about everything. I get my feelings hurt hella easily, but I think I just like feel things deeply. Right. It's that, that mustard seed. Yeah. They say you don't have to keep asking God for the same stuff. He heard you the first time. And when you keep asking God for the same thing, that means you don't have faith in him. That means you're not trusting him. That means you don't believe that he's going to... Make make do of what you're asking when you keep God please God next day God please imagine to bring me this job God please actually help me put, you know what I mean when you keep asking for the same thing you don't believe and yeah, trust God yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't trust and believe yeah, that God feel... will do the things that He He is gonna do for you yeah. so that's why I say when I say you cannot have faith and have doubt if you gonna have faith yeah you gonna have doubt. But you gotta let that faith overpower. Yeah. yeah. See, that's, what, that's what a lot of people don't do, though. They don't. They let, they, but they, you, it's it's, yeah. it's also mental. It's yeah. also mental. It's also truly believing in the power. That's let me say, I'm spiritual, and like I said, I'm spiritual religion. Yeah. It's truly believing that that God gonna gonna do uh, what, he, what He got planned yeah. for you, and and trusting His plan, not our plan. It made me more open. Cause like like me growing up. So growing up, I was like basically forced to go to church every week for yeah. like two, three times a week, right? Yeah, no choice. I'm forced to be yeah, like, no you're a choice. Christian. You believe in Jesus. You believe in this. This is what's going on. This is how it is. Mm -hmm. When I got to a certain age, I understood different things and I, I was able to explore different things for myself and I realized like I could think for myself. And I said, okay, you know what? This is this is what I think about the world. I'm thinking spirituality. Of course, it's a higher being. And this is what I thought. So basically it just opened my third eye to different shit like I just I just think broader with everything like, I'm, I'm more open I'm not like closed off about nothing when people talk to me and have conversations about shit I can sit there and be like okay okay this, okay bet okay I can I, I can actually like take it in and actually analyze it it's, instead of me just closing it off when, like when somebody says something to me at first I would close it off like man fuck that I don't believe that shit you lying blah 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 now I can like have an open mind about it, at least think about it, and say, you know what, you might be right. So that's that's what it done for me. Um, I'm not gonna say I take for granted, but as a, as a child, you really don't understand it. I feel like if you're older, you don't understand it. But um, going to church as a child, though. Yeah, you know, I, we went to the same like, church. Yeah, yeah, we went to church. Like, but as a child, though, like my mom, like integrated, me, hey, you gotta go to church every mm -hmm. Sunday. Like you're mm -hmm. not even really hearing that as a child. Mm -hmm. Like some people ain't even hearing that as adults. But it's like. I understand like why you kept me that. But one, it wasn't even really about the church per se. It's really just keep me out of trouble. Right. You know what I'm saying? One. Right. Let but me. Then it's um... also like get, get him. A, it's really just to get him another perspective on like what, what's going on in your neighborhood. It's not what's going on in life per se. Right. You know what I'm saying? So and that, don't it's be an opportunity. To, yeah. Right. But yeah. as child, you don't really, you don't really like you take don't. in that. You just you know really, you annoyed with it. Like yeah, I gotta go to the church. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So it'd it be like that. Um. Two. I think that because of that, it's kind of like really like. Like change, like my perspective on like how I think, how I interact with people, like yeah, um, it affects your mentality and, it, it, in, in a and good way though, like and, and, oh yeah, 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 in a good way because some people can't overcome their thoughts. I think people gotta look into stuff themselves. You know what I'm saying? It's like read for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I could tell you X, Y, and Z, but do the research yourself, man, because a lot of things are to be, a lot of things are misinterpreted, right? So like I misinterpret something that I was taught or read and I tell it to you, are you gonna interpret it the same way or are you gonna do some research yourself and figure it out the way you see it fit? Because we're all different. We all have different experiences. 
like you said, you was grow, you grew up on some street shit. I could have grew up on some schoolboy shit. And the same message that he's telling you, that shit might hit me different. You feel me? Because you grew up street, right? I grew up in school or whatever. So I just think we as people in general, like we all just have to look for ourselves. Well, that's the problem. A lot of people are fucking sheep. Yeah, sheep. they follow us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 90% of motherfuckers are sheep. All you gotta do is look on Instagram. Yeah. Just look on Instagram. Everybody's sheep, bro. Yeah. Whatever the most popping hype shit is, everybody follow. Right. You don't fuck with something until you're told it's cool. Exactly. It has to be validated. Man, that's some shit we, thank you. Thank you. You feel me? That's some shit we sit in there now when like understanding that um, it's okay to be deserving. Like, you feel me? You can feel worthy and like you earned the things you worked for. Like I've struggled uh, a lot feeling like I'm worthy of where I am. I know I work to get here, but like being worthy of, of your position and your success is different. And I used to look at like, uh, I feel like if I do anything conflicting of like my soul of being a good person, then I'm unworthy of everything. It's like strip everything (laughs) from me, you feel me? But that's unreal and unnatural as a human. So like now learning to sit in this space and just be like, you feel me? Uh, Past is past, but you are where you are because you you know, you work to be there. You earned that shit. Right. That's talking shit. Come on, thank you. (laughs) Fuck all that, man. Open your heart, open your eyes, open your mind. And figure it out for yourself, man. And I think that's where the true spirituality comes versus, yo, I'm telling you, you need to like Donald Trump. Or I'm telling you, you yeah. need to like Kim. Or I'm telling you, you need to like what whoever, you know what I'm saying? Like, figure it out on your own. I'm telling you that this artist is hot. Come on, my man. That, you know what? It's like that with me with like movies and shit, right? <laughs> Cause I love movies, so it's like I hate when people be like, "Oh, I ain't going to see that because everybody said it was whack." Well, I'm going to see it for myself. Let me know. Yeah. Let me figure out if it's, yeah. let me figure out if it's whack. Think for yourself, man. Yeah. I hate when people do that shit. Yeah. Oh, I ain't gonna listen to this album. They say this album whack. They say. Well, I'm gonna I'm 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 see for myself. <laughs> Mom, be killing Fuck me what that. y'all talking about. She like she be like, "Oh yeah, man, they're at my job. They said that this is a good movie." I'm like. <sighs> Right, did they say that or did you say that? Like, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna check it out, bro. I ain't never letting, I ain't never gonna <laughs> let nobody else's opinion of some shit sway my opinion of some shit. I'm gonna see for myself because yeah. just because you don't like some shit, don't mean I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. We talking about that earlier about, this, about some music. Yeah. You was like, yeah, that shit cool, but I'm like, nah, that shit fire. He's spitting like the shit he's talking about is crazy, but you like, nah, that's all right. But that's okay though. You that's still, how I feel. You still my motherfucking dog. Right, but that's just me. That's how I feel. I'm still a proper nigga for you. Right. You ain't gotta feel how I feel, but you know, think for yourself. And I'm stop being a fucking sheep. Stop being a sheep. Man. Take off the fucking wool. <laughs> Motherfuckers, be a wolf sometimes. Y'all niggas scared to be wolves? Like, turn the fuck up, bro. Like, life is too short for this shit. Nah, think for yourself for sure. Think Before for you know it, you're gonna be motherfucking 70 years old, wishing you did some shit that you looking at niggas on Instagram or whatever the new platform is doing and you're gonna wish you did that shit Man. because you've been a sheep your whole motherfucking life been a fucking follower nigga turn the fuck up that one little joint that one little joint that I interview with yeah fucking sheep oh, oh yeah. yeah oh yeah 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 let me see my eyes let me see my eyes bruh <laughs> fucking sheep ah! that is a prime sheep. example sheep. that's a prime example of not thinking for yourself ah! is that a goat or sheep he, ah! he gotta have a he gotta have a G wagon yeah. He yeah, gotta yeah. have. That's crazy. That's crazy. crazy. She gonna be seventy and single. Seventy and miserable, bro. Even if she ain't single, that motherfucker gonna be miserable. You gonna be fucking miserable. Uh, yeah, I think like also battling with the uh, imposter syndrome is like something that is very, very heavily prevalent. At least in my position um, in the journey that we're on together, just feeling like, you know, I earned my place and where I'm at and. Um, man not feeling guilty about how hard i worked and like um like people are going to be upset with you i guess for like not being where they feel like they deserve to be but like you did the work you feel me so wherever you at is because you earned that place regardless of like how you whatever you story you tell yourself or whatever other people tell you about like where they feel like you should be you know 
Talk your shit. <laughs> right. She was on EYL yesterday. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> and like I learned in my earlier 20s. So if you're in your early 20s, like, yo, just mom out. Like, it's, again, it's about being at peace. And I feel like you gotta really pick and choose, like, you have choices of how you wanna navigate through life. And it's really hard when you're like in your 20s and when you're just kind of growing up and going through life. You want it, you feel like you gotta be at this point in your life, and this point you're comparing this person and what they're doing, and you feel like you should be there. It's That's like real. just honestly don't compare yourself and just enjoy where you are. Like you're never gonna be this young again. You're not gonna be this fly again. That's not me. and you're not gonna be this, you know, out You might be this fly again. You might this no, but in a different way, in a different time. You know what I'm saying? Like the way you are right now is so unique and it's so special because you're never gonna be like this again. Like tomorrow you might wake up and decide you wanna do something totally different. And it's like, we get so caught up in how we think our world and our life is supposed to be that we forget the little moments that we're making right now. And it's like, I read this quote a long time ago. It's like, you go through life and you feel like everything is the same and you look back and everything is different, like everything. And there's been so many moments where I've worked my ass off to get into different places in life. And as soon as I get there, I'm looking for the next thing that I want to do. And it's like, yo, like, remember, this is the shit that you've been praying for and you cried about and you were stressed out about. Enjoy that shit. Like, it, it, enjoy, like, the little shit. Like, celebrate the little wins and the little whatever. You know, shit where you feel like it's stupid. So what? You know what I mean? Like, make life. You can make life whatever you want it to be. You can make this show whatever you want it to, to be for you. And, yeah, like, it's, it's your responsibility to do that. All the people around you in your life, like, yeah, they play a part, but you make it what it is. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you can't depend and make anybody make that for you. So, just... Yeah, enjoy it. I feel like you always are where you're supposed to be. You know, you're uh, you're always going to be exactly where your actions have led you. And uh, I think that there's just beautiful alignment in that. You feel me? I don't think you ever have to question where you are in life because you're exactly where your actions led you every time. Right. Timing is always perfect. Hello? <laughs> it's you. universal timing. Thank you. Like, mm -hmm. you're always exactly where you're supposed to be, even if you don't understand it or you feel like it's wrong somehow. Like, who are you to tell the universe that they messed up on your timing? You know, like, you, <laughs> right. ain't, you just ain't earned that timing yet. You know, you just got to either keep working or, you know, like, when things are bad, I feel like it's usually when people are like, ah, this is wrong. Like, I'm not supposed to be here or whatever. But it's like, that's building you. So that way, when you get to where you're supposed to be or where you want to be, you're ready to receive that blessing. Right. Or else if you ain't go through nothing, you're going to fumble that bag when you get it. Time and only ain't right when it's a situation you don't, you don't right. enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> not everything wrong. Right. <laughs> Sometimes you need, you just need, yeah, you need yeah. something to, to talk, mental, somebody to talk to. Mental illness is, is hard right. for a lot of people. And I can't say for everybody how they deal with mental illness. I pray for everybody that go through anything mentally um, and is, isn't able to overcome those thoughts. But I know my faith and my God is what helped me mm -hmm. overcome my thoughts. And anytime I feel in doubt, anytime I feel like I'm not worthy, anytime I feel like I'm going to jump off a cliff, you know, I'm able to say, you know, this ain't my plan. Mm -hmm. This is God's plan. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that plan is that he got for me, mm -hmm. I ask God to keep me on a path destined for me. I don't know what your plan is for me, but keep me on a path that you have destined for me. So with that, whatever that looks like, I try to continue to walk that path. And if it strays away and from what I think it is, and that just, that's just is what God got for me. So, no. but it plays a major role. Um, it, spirituality it, plays it plays a major factor sure. in how I move and make my decision making skills. Sure. Do you think spirituality Nah, fuck no. This is where people get lost. People think that when they say I'm I'm, I'm spiritual, I don't believe. No, they, this is the re spiritual relating to or affecting the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. Now let me tell you what relig religious means. Religion is the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. I don't. I don't think spirituality is god. It could be, but I don't think it's That's necessarily the same. I don't. It's spirit. It's spirit. It's spirituality and religion. That's two different things. Right? Yeah, that's two different things. Yeah. I think God comes in under religion. Yeah, He does come under religion because you call Him God, but Someone who's spiritual may call it the universe. They might call it energy. Mm -hmm. They may call it 
don't know. That's all the girls yeah. that got the crystals and the waist beads. Yeah, shout out to and, shout out to y'all. And, and the crystals and, and the waist beads. And the tarot cards. <laughs> hey, them waist beads fucking sexy though. Exactly though. I fuck with y'all. I will break your waist beads, girl. Come, come I'll play with me. Nah, I ain't mad at the waist beads at all. I'll break it. I ain't mad at them. Where them motherfuckers? I'm just saying, like that's what coincides with each other though. I'm breaking your waist Like the girls that wear the waist beads, I think they're more spiritual than religious. You know who she is. You know. You know, who I'm, you know who I'm talking to. I'll break your waist, girl. Play with me. Play with me. Why are you watching? More people are religious than they are spiritual, but they don't know it. When people say, oh, I do believe in God, I just don't pray. You're religious. When you believe in a God, you don't pray. that is religious. Yeah. That's not spiritual. No. That's not spiritual. You are religious. If you believe in a God, a God, if you believe there is a God, doesn't matter which one. If you believe there is a supernatural God, that is religious. That is not spiritual. And we have to know the Man. two. I know we got our crystals and stuff. And our hearts and all that. Don't the waist and it's a, in the waist beads. In the waist beads and all that <laughs> shit. But, uh, if, you have a, yeah. if you believe in a God, if you believe in a God, the belief and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods, that's religion. So yes, there's a there's a there's a difference, but I'm both. I feel like saying when people say I'm a spiritual person, I don't go to church. This touchy. It's like it's like you like halfway in, halfway out. Like yeah, you you, you want to you believe in some, certain theories, but you don't believe in everything. Like you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't really know how. I to think I think people do that because they don't want to have that accountability factor. Mm. I think I think being spiritual. This is what they're saying. But being spiritual keeps you less accountable of what the Bible says. And a lot of people aren't in, it's, they say the Bible is very contradicting. Um, and I respect anybody's belief of what they think or feel. Um, and I'm always willing and open for all of that. But um, I think it just, it's an accountability factor. And people just rather be like, I do believe there is a God, but I'm just going to be the best version of me that I can be in whatever it comes comes I think that's why generation is, is at personally whatever comes comes I do believe there is a guy I'm gonna do my best I can and whatever comes comes but it, it's it's so that I just think people like accountability and, and and stand into the higher power women being good company to men right if you fuck with a dude y'all kicking it y'all been vibing right you go to you, you hang out with him at some event where there's other people, his friends around, anybody else around, right? I'm for me, I don't like that friendly ass shit. Like that friendly ass shit, you be in everybody's face, kicking and walking around and all these niggas face. Cut that shit out. Cut that shit out. That ain't that ain't good company. That, <laughs> that ain't good company, my nigga. Like if you fuck with me, fuck with me, like. I don't need every nigga in the party feeling like he can take you to the crib. You friendly little, no, you friendly little bitch. That's what he wanted to say. I learned too, as a friend, more friends are going through stuff, instead of always giving advice, ask them, do they want me to listen or do you want advice? Because one time I was giving my friend a whole bunch of advice and she like, bitch, I already know what I need to do. Mm. Like, I know I should lead a nigga. I know he ain't shit. She knew that, but she didn't need me to tell her that. Right. She just wanted me to just listen. listen to her, yeah. And then when she was ready, she would do so. And that, I took that with me. Nah, nobody <laughs> likes a friendly bitch. But same thing, I don't think women like friendly ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? You a little too friendly with my homegirl or that girl or whatever. I get it. I, I, feel, I feel what you're saying. I go to the bathroom, and you, I come out the bathroom, and you motherfucking in Gerardo face, laughing and geeking. The fuck? Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. Gerardo, just a random name, I don't know. <laughs> nah, but that is weird. Yeah, I've seen that before. What do you think about women with good company? Like, what, what else you got besides that? Yeah, like, in conclusion, you know, you are the company that you keep. You know what I'm saying? If you're around three unmotivated, lazy, broke-ass people, I promise you, you will be the fourth person. Don't ever think you are exempt. There is no exception to the rule. So just be mindful of the company that you keep. Try to make really good decisions. Use your discernment, listen to your gut. Like like I said, all the answers are inside of you already. Like you don't gotta question it, you know. 
like, you know, who's for you is for you. Like, rock with people who rock with you, love people who love on you, and know when to let go of people who don't serve you anymore. I think that is probably the biggest lesson I learned in my decade of the 20s. Learn when to let the fuck go. It's gonna be okay. You're always going to be exactly where your actions lead you. So it's like if you ever look around you and the company around you, you feel a way about it and like it's not up to par or where you feel it should be. It's just a reflection of how you move in and who you are all the time. Like the, the grander you become and the more you grow, the more the people around you grow and you get around people that are on that pace. But um, you feel me? If you a shitty person and you putting shit out, usually you'll look around you and you you see shit around here. This is what it is. Right. So what I'm gonna say, good company for a female. Be wet and ready. Like, oh, oh no, what do you good companies like what what, what are do my you intentions? My intentions no. is to get to know you. So what do you think thorough. good company is in the female? Like when you have a good time with a female, what is that? What is that like? When you when you hang with a female and, and it's a good ass time, what is that like? That's it's good genuine. company. It's genuine, it's genuine, it's fun, it's goofy, she naked, you know what I'm saying? She Baby <laughs> You know, I'm into the oil. <laughs> Baby oil is always good company. Wear, uh, what's that shit that you can see through? Met, net, mesh. Yes. I like that shit. That's my shit. That's you can never company. go wrong with baby oil, though. That's my, that's, that's my idea of a uh, good company. But I don't know, bro. Just be yourself, man. I feel like she just need to be herself. So you, so you just a freak nasty idea. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so long as they being freaky with baby oil, that's good company. I didn't say that. That's that what you said. I just wanted to be genuine. That's it. Genuinely, genuinely, genuinely wet with coconut oil <laughs> and, and fishnet stockings. I'm joking. Edit this out. <laughs> it's never a them thing. Like it's never they. They're doing something bad or they're wrong. It's always a you thing. Like if you look around and you don't like what you surrounded with, that's because you not doing the right thing. <laughs> like right. It's always, it's always that simple. I think good company is effort. Um, good company is, is wanting to be there. Good company is, um, you know, just wanting to make sure that, that we're good. Like, you know, wherever, in any space, whether it's a relationship, friendship, like, make sure that we're good. Make sure that we're having a good time, that everybody is, is at, at a high as far as, like, your mental, as far as, like, your energy. Like, um, how can I be a good friend to you? How can I be a good friend to you? I feel like all of my cast members, all of my friends are like good company to me. That's, I, I that's and why ask your friends, friends that. Ask your friends, how can I be a better friend to you? I don't think we ask our friends that enough. Yeah. I asked a couple of my friends one time, like, how could I be a better friend? Mm -hmm. And some was like, you know, be around my kids more. Mm -hmm. You know, come around with the kids. You know, sometimes we don't take it in account of our friends with kids mm -hmm. and just doing things with the kids, even though we don't have kids. Ask your friends if they want to go to the fair with, with the kids. Um, you know, so it's little stuff like that. Yeah, and have a transparent communication stream. You know what I'm saying? One thing you can't run away from is you start fucking with people as adults and their friendship is accountability. So, like, take constructive criticism. Listen to your people when they're talking to you. And, like, one thing I like to tell people a lot of time, like, if you've been fucking with people that's been fucking with you for a long time, if they tell you some shit that you don't like when you up, don't fuck around and just cast them off because everybody else telling you what they want to hear. Because you got to remember, like, a lot of times, them niggas are just here for the reason, not for the season. You know what I'm saying? And the person that's been holding you down and fucking with you, if they, if they disagreeing with some shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you just might want to take a look at it. Like, sometimes it ain't always about that shit, but, like, just understand, like, People who ain't got no reason to be attached to you, who was fucking with you when you was down, don't forget about those type of folks. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah, and we gotta stop being selfish. I'm telling myself this. Like, yeah. Um, a lot of times we get caught up in like what we what, what we doing in our personal life, what we got going on, whether it's our own business, us trying to you know go through school, us trying to just be able to hold down the household. That we also kind of forget about the others, like the family members, the reason why you My are, family. you know, why you, where you yeah, at, you know, what I'm saying? that rage, yeah. you know, that, that used to, you know, pick you up and take you to practice. Or stuff Cousins like that, that like, you was inseparable with. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, that <laughs> yeah. you might not be as close with now Correct. because you're going through yeah. other shit. But like, yeah. I feel like that's 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 more important than anything. I because agree. Our family is more important than anything. Yeah, and we but, we we take that for granted, and it takes somebody, it takes us losing a family member for everybody to come together. Yeah. You know, and I always say I, I don't want it to be that way, but we, we got to do better with our family and the people that I love ones. I just, I love ones. Like, 
we got to do better. We get so caught up with the things we got going on in our life sometimes mm -hmm. that the people, the good company that always been in our corner, mm -hmm. we neglect and we take it for granted. So keep good company. Oh, yeah. Ew, that, was that was good. What's up, y'all? From one of my favorite projects, Champagne Gummies. It's Breath Fashion with La Russell and Tote. Let's get it. We in the ATL with it, unspoken podcast. Really welcome me inside the home. Can y'all make some noise one time? Yeah. It's not the same. This some classic shit. I'm so honored. Can I talk my shit though? Huh? Shedding tears on this air mattress. Heart on my sleeve, I'm in red fashion. Tote got me in my mold again. Just hit seven, I'm finna roll again These niggas jokes, it's hard to hold it in Huh? We done came hella far Made it out with hella scars Gonna get your telescope I done made hella stars I done work hella hard Grind mode every day I was still shooting when it felt like I would never play Looked like I was lost I was trying to find a better way Look at that, I found a better way This one for my niggas who been with me from the jump The ones who seen treasure in this shit I thought was junk The ones who couldn't fit, so they rolled in the trunk The ones who didn't care about the top or bottom bunk We done had to share beds Me and Bonnie used to split airheads Now we split equity Nigga, this is boss talk My niggas work with me 500 episodes, we did all that work for free Everything priceless, couldn't tell you what it's worth to me Huh? The bag y'all in look more like a purse to me. What? Shedding tears on this air mattress. Hey, heart on my sleeve, I'm in red fashion. Shedding tears on this air mattress. Heart on my sleeve, I'm in red fashion. Huh? Y'all can cheer. <laughs> Give me that other one, so Incredible, man. We in the ATL. I love it. Super honored, man. Shout out Nigel. Shout out everybody here. Shout out Unspoken. We in the A. Can I talk my shit one time? No. Hey. I'm on ESPN and I don't even ball. If I did, it'd be me against y'all. Got an offer for a show and they asking for my job. Too many to call, nigga. I didn't put the work in. Had to work for free. My mom and baby mama both work with me. I put my niggas on. I got my paper up. Look at my hands, nigga. They full of paper cuts. Bitch, I'm I N D E P E N D E N T. Do you know what that? Bitch, niggas H A T E on me. Huh? Crouton, shit, it come with that green. Bitch, I hopped out the van with 10 of my man. Split the pie with the guys, gave 10 of the fans. Oh shit, I think she like me. I be snapping like. Like me, not likely. I made it to the top, I was hiking. How striking to meet a nigga like me, the greatest a nigga might. I'm on ESPN and I don't even ball. If I did, it'd be me against. Got an offer for a show and they asking for my jaw. Too, too many to call, nigga. I didn't put the work in, had to work for free. My mom and baby mama both work with me. I put my niggas on, I got my paper up. Look at my hands, nigga, they full of paper cuts. Bitch, I'm I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that? Bitch, I'm I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that means? Huh? Yeah. We live from the crib, it's not the same. It's different.
just cultivate some different experience with the people you deal with, the people around you, you know, That's different. Yeah. 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 We in the house with it every day. Sometimes it's a different level. Different level. Yeah. Yeah.